everybody to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro with your friendly neighborhood photographer, Cardi. I have to tell you, adding video to my bucket list as things that I could do as a photographer was the smartest thing that I ever did. Let's go, Ray Cleveland. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. Adding video to my bucket list as a photographer was one of the smartest things I've ever done in my career since teaching and starting to do workshops. We have to embrace the things that we're afraid of as photographers and adding a new thing when you're already relatively new at shooting photographs is scary, but we're starting small. The reason that I put this challenge at the beginning of the month is at the beginning of the year is because it's gonna set your year up with you guys with the right kind of confidence to get into the things that I want you guys to be doing later on in the year. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to be embracing the technical side of photography that you already know and just switching the camera to video and recording some video clips. If you're a natural light shooter, Switching the camera to video with manual exposure with the same settings as your best picture was is a great way to get video clips of the photograph that you're taking right now. You've seen Helldog do this quite a bit with his wildlife photography. I encouraged Helldog to start doing this with his wildlife photography probably last year. And now it's something that he does so regularly. It's, um, it's really helpful and part of his workflow. Welcome, Ray Cleveland. I hope you're feeling well. Welcome, Andy. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Now, I'm by no means a filmmaker. And I have to say, like, I've been shooting video and making short films since 2009. But... I've been dedicating much of my time over the last several years to try to get better at telling stories, both through photography and through my video content. I'm hoping you guys are going to join me along the way, as well as creating your own video content so you can tell your own stories easier, more confidently. Even if the camera that you're using to film yourself is your phone, by the way, most phones shoot better video than older cameras. So if you have a phone, you have a 4K camera in your pocket. So don't think of having a phone only as a limitation. There's many photographers that use their phone only for all the behind the scenes, all their shorts, all their clips. So. Um, please don't think of, um, if you have an older camera, don't think of that as a limitation. The next thing I want you to know is I know that I'm sure you guys might be feeling it, finding it hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sure you might be finding it hard to start some of the challenges that I have for you this month. I understand. Know that us creatives often have mental blocks associated with so many things. Today, we're going to talk about how to get through some of the obstacles that you might be facing with being on camera and, of course, shooting yourself portraits. Know that putting yourself out there is hard. Today, we're going to zero in on one huge mindset shift that you can use to help you get over the hump and get you in front of your own lens for some new photographs, as well as, your, as you sharing your thoughts and your ideas with the world. I think that video is the one thing that more photographers really need to embrace. I feel like, I, I have to really be honest here, if I didn't start video when I did, if I didn't start shooting video back in 2009 when the Canon 7D came out, the 7D and the 5D, original 5D, were cameras that shot video. 
Now this video was 720p. You're looking at a 720p video, but understand at that time, this was the beginning of me being able to see my photographs move. And what I did in the beginning was my camera was always on a tripod. My camera did not autofocus. So what I ended up doing was just finding the focus point, zooming in, locking the focus, and then just running the camera. And the person could move in and out of focus, but I just let that happen. So embracing video early is something that I, I can't tell you how important it is. It literally, it was a game changer. It literally was a game changer for me. And translating shooting video shooting behind the scenes and then adding that last little bit of special sauce which is you you're that last little bit of special sauce you on camera that's the that's the part that's missing and today we're really going to talk about you guys putting yourself out there and we're going to zero in on that mindset shift that I believe you guys have to do in order to get over the hump. So I want you guys to be able to share your thoughts and your ideas with the world. Let's start with a little bit of this week's inspiration. This is a clip that I found recently, as in yesterday, on YouTube. For all the Sony shooters out there, you guys should be very happy with what I'm about to show you. This video is called Translating Emotion into Images, African Photography Adventures, and this is a Sony G Master perspective. Let's get into it. Human emotion, that's how I see the world. How many of you all have been to Africa? I've not been to Africa, but I'm very, very interested in my viewers and your travels and where you've been in the world. Let me know, leave a comment if you've been to Africa. Being able to capture that authentically, wow. that's everything to me. This is shot really well. You've been to Swaziland. That's amazing, Alice. Amazing. I wanted to come to Africa because I'm a Nigerian, first generation, and I've never been to the continent of Africa. Look how beautiful that is. So, so to be able to document where I have culture that originates from was just super important to me. Really well shot, eh? I wanted to feel that culture shock. Wow, that's amazing. Incredibly well hey. shot, right? <laughs> I've never experienced anything like this. Beautiful. I gotta tell you, him it using actually his... feels like another world. He's not using any of his lens hoods, and it's kind of making me crazy. Um, there's a shot here where he has his lens hood on backwards. Oh. Like this. Beautiful. With that lens. There's a shot actually here like where he's, world. this, where he's using a massive, like, what's that, hell dog, a 500? And also lens hood on backwards. This, I don't really get. Um, but okay, okay, Sony. With two members of the Saburu tribe, they catch two more in life. Typically Thanks, used Ray. to shooting live music, but this is a completely new territory for me. The photography is strong, though, you know? It's strong. He looks so out of his element. It's kind Growing of up with cute. immigrant parents, it's you're kind of cute. led to believe that there is no real career path in the creative field. 
being a first generation Nigerian, I wasn't really built to do any of the things that my parents wanted me to do. But this is shot really you know, well. I picked up my first camera. Everything just really made sense. Oh, uh, that shot is gorgeous. This shot with the sun coming through, like here, is just really strong. Why is this pen not working today? That's when I became who I was supposed to be. My lens choice translate the world around me. This trusty 24 to 70. You treat them as your eyes. Wouldn't I want to capture That's like this epic sleeping? shot? That's an epic shot. I mean, you can't go into these kinds of adventure films without a drone. Like, look at this drone. You treat shot. them as your eyes. This right here is so magnificent. Like, this is one of those hero shots, and you can see um whoever shot this is dropping this directly in the center of the video like it's literally in the center wouldn't i want to capture like this Such sweeping vista shot. as well as my subject i have the versatility to zoom in and zoom out oh that's beautiful I just came across the family of lions right now i'm using the 400 2.8 you're there getting you a go. more intimate 400 perspective I'm being my most authentic self when I have a camera in my hand. Closer, closer. Right there. It's all good, Ray. Capturing these amazing moments with people, just being themselves. It's like therapy for me. You know, being a creative. There are times where I feel that I'm an imposter in this space. This is a great shot. And again, later on this month, guys, we're talking about shooting B-roll and shooting B-roll of yourself. Next, next week, we're talking perspective and angles. And it's all about having new fresh perspectives so this video and i chose this piece of video to show you today because of angles talking to camera fresh perspective all natural light like every the drone flying all the things and all the elements that make this video up are all things that i believe that you guys can do but seeing it this way it's all put together in one piece, so it just makes it so special. There are times where I feel that like even look at this shot. It's handheld, right? It's somebody walking without a gimbal beside this photographer. And look at the look at the there motion. There are times where I feel that I'm an like, imposter in the space. They don't hold the shot too long, but this is the shot that I wanted to zero in on. This is such amazing B-roll shooting yourself. So just look at how lovely this show like is. like my work isn't great enough. Amazing. And the Welcome, only cure Julie. is going out and creating. So I've been shooting a member wow. of the Sephora's, very sharply dressed individuals. Wow. Sometimes getting out of your own comfort zone can switch your perspective. just freeze that moment and make it into something more. My time in Africa has really reinvigorated my spirit. This video was so inspiring. Though. Just capturing people being this joyful, it makes me joyful as well. <laughs> They're super proud of the way that they live. Their heritage, their culture, that's everything to them. Being true to who you are, there's no reason to hide that. This is why I'm a photographer. It's who I am. So good, eh? I thought that that would um, really inspire you guys. And, and I, I guess just a great way to start off this episode. Something that was just so oomph and had 
such power, you know, and also such great examples of speaking to camera, such great examples of telling a story through photography and video. And that piece was just put together really beautifully. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. So the main body of today's episode is all about a mindset shift. Um, oh, really? Ray, that's interesting. I, I, I would, that's like, listen, amazing, Ray. That's really great. Number one, you've watched one of my live streams before. I'm live. You're watching something on YouTube. What a natural thing is to like autoplay me next. That's amazing. Thank you for that heads up. I really do appreciate it. Today in foundation, we're going to talk about some mind shifts that I used in order to get better at speaking to camera. Know that I'm pushing myself and you guys into new territories. We also grow the most when we're uncomfortable. I want you to hear that again. We grow the most as people and as photographers when we're uncomfortable. The professional photography space is changing. The reason that you guys all know Peter McKinnon, Maddie, Evan Raff is because of YouTube. Video is the number one marketing tool that we could be using as photographers in order to get our work, in order to get our message out there. So getting you out there and getting used to being out there is essential to you advancing as a photographer. And again, this is one of those things that I wish that I had as a tool when I started, the ability to shoot my own video content, to promote myself, to promote how I shoot, why I shoot. If I had that as a tool when I was in my first years of business, there's no, there's no limit to what I could have done. You guys all have that as a tool accessible to you. So this month is all about you embracing video as a tool and all the different aspects of how you can use it. And yes, this is a photography show, but as I said in the last episode, I'm trying to create the ultimate photographer. That ultimate photographer is you. So part of you being that ultimate photographer is you being comfortable with yourself enough to talk about what you're doing to a camera and what better way to practice than you alone on your own in your house talking to camera that's the best way to practice and you can use these skills when you're talking to clients when you're talking to potential customers when you're trying to pitch when you're trying to sell the enthusiasm that they see from you that's how you're going to get work so just like you would study for an exam when you're in school just like you would study to prepare the same mindset has to happen when it comes to preparing yourself to be in front of new people or speaking to strangers. We've all asked a new person out on a date, right? We've all asked a new person out on a date and have had that butterfly feeling in that stomach. That feeling is a shift in mindset. We're used to that feeling before. It's us walking towards something that's hard to do. We have to get used to being uncomfortable. It's so necessary for us to get used to being uncomfortable. As photographers, as artists, as creatives, it's not necessary actually for us to believe in ourselves in order to become successful. We just have to do the work. We just have to show up. The work is hard. All work is hard, but focusing on the work that we have to do distracts us from the fact that we might not be as confident in our abilities. Most successful creatives, they just step up and do the work. 
if we show up and grind and try and try again, the belief in yourself comes from small wins and small goals. And those small wins and small goals happen when you show up to do the work. Get used to being in scenarios where you're in the spotlight. Again, most creatives, most photographers, we get satisfied by putting other people in the spotlight, by making other people look good. We're not really interested in the spotlight being on us or at all making us look good. It's not about us, it's about our subjects. But we have to get used to being in scenarios where we're in the spotlight. Anytime that we're running a photo shoot or it's our shoot and there's people on crew, they're all looking to you, the leader, to tell them what's happening. You have to have that confidence and that authority and that trust that comes with getting used to speaking to camera, it's gonna enable you in so many other ways. Not preparing or practicing talking to camera on your own, alone, you're doing a huge disservice to yourself. We have this technology in our pocket. In 2023, clients are looking for video content on the photographers that they hire. They wanna see you. They wanna see you work. They want to hear your tone. They wanna hear what you sound like. They wanna know what makes you, you. I want you to know that your authenticity is valuable. And the title of this episode is Transparency is the New Meta. Transparency, us being open and transparent about how we do the things that we do, why we do the things that we do, and showing people us doing those things. It's not just us as a photographer, it's us as creative people in all the different avenues that that creativity can go. There are some very big meta shifts that are happening this year. Podcasting and long form content is becoming what people are seeking out. They're looking for longer form content. They're looking for more of a deep dive on things and on people. If you're a photographer and you're not talking about your process, why you do the things that you do, there's other photographers that are. And those are the photographers that when clients are searching, they're gonna find those clips, they're gonna find those videos from those other photographers. And those are the photographers that are gonna end up getting FaceTime with clients. They have the experience being in front of the camera. They have the experience talking um, to strangers and they have the experience um, doing these meetings. So my advice to you is shift your mind to know that our authenticity is valuable and our authenticity, our passion, our understanding of a project, our understanding of the craft, all of that comes through when we record ourselves. Our sensitivity, our nuance, all of this comes across when we speak to camera. And I wish the things that I'm telling you guys I knew earlier because I did have the ability to speak to camera. I had this ability 13 years ago and I didn't use the, the equipment and the talent that I had then. I used it so sporadically with no consistency. I wish that I knew about consistency. I wish I knew how fa how much faster I would have advanced in my photography career if I would use if I had have used video more often earlier and not just for clients. I mean turning the camera on myself and talking about the things that were relevant of the day, the things that were making me passionate, the things that I was excited about, the things that I was upset about, the things that made me tick. I needed to record back then. 
we can't live in the past. None of us ever should. But what we can do is we can start things today. And you guys know this week's challenge is speaking to camera. And I'm trying to coach you guys and talk you guys through that. But you have to know transparency is the new meta. In order for you to really succeed as a creative, you have to let people in to your world a little bit more. They say that customers need to see five different impressions from a product or a service before they buy into it. If you guys are only using your website and sharing photography, you're using Instagram and sharing photography, if you're not making any short form video content, if you're not making any videos, if you're not using YouTube or reels or shorts or stories or some of the other avenues that you could be um, sort of filtering your videos into, you're not using the tools available to us to market. And these tools are free. Um, Ray says he's super self-conscious about his new voice after getting cancer removed from his throat, from his tongue, but he still did a voiceover for a new video. Now, I want you to listen to this again, okay? Ray is self-conscious about his new voice because he had cancer removed from his tongue. But yet, he still recorded a video for this challenge. He still put himself out there. Ray, thank you for doing that. And also, use Ray as an example. Use Ray as an example. If Ray can do it, you can do it. There's no excuse. And Ray, thank you for being such an amazing example. And also, guys, um, send Ray uh, some hearts, some love. Um, I have a very, very supportive community. If you're watching this after my live stream, if you're watching this just as the video, as a video, know that I have an incredibly supportive photography community. If you're looking for a community, a community of other photographers like you that are just so passionate about photography and have such a desire to get better, you're in the right place. Make sure that you look in the description of the video that you're watching and you'll see the Discord link. Join that Discord. Look around. See how absolutely friendly and amazingly helpful this audience is. And uh, welcome. Be a part of the community. It's fastly growing, and there's a reason. It's because um, the Cardi Crew community is like pillows, ready to hug you and embrace you and welcome you in. So it's all about support. Please join the Discord if you're not there already. I found something else. Before I get into looking at some photos, um, this month's theme is self-exploration. And I want you guys to know I put the hardest month first. I put the hardest month first to set the tone and to shift your mindset for this year. You guys need to use video in your marketing. You need to use video as a weapon. I put this theme here in January just so your wings can sprout out of your back in January and you can fly for the rest of the year. It wouldn't make much sense for me to do this in say August. Brad Rushing is a director and a director of photography. This piece of video is so inspirational that I, I really felt it necessary, I think, to share with you. I don't even really know how to um, frame it. It's just beautiful. So I think it's necessary for us to watch. Just take this. One in. of the quotes on your IMDb page is evolve, study, 
your strategies versus results and adjust course. Pay attention to what works for your peers and those who have come before. Ask for advice from experienced filmmakers. Definitely do not keep pursuing a course of action that is producing no results or poor results. And I've seen so many people ruin their careers because they were inflexible and unable to adapt. Yeah. So, so this is science right here. I want you to think about this and, and compare it to a photography career. Really look at this. Evolve. That's the first... The evolution for you is adding new skills as you learn them. And one of those skills is talking to camera. So let's go for four. Evolve. That's the first thing. Study your strategies versus results. And adjust course. That's what I've done. That's why I'm on YouTube. Pay attention to what works for your peers, other people around you, and those who've come before. Hey, that's me. I've come before you guys. Ask for advice from experienced filmmakers, or you can say photographers. Definitely do not keep pursuing a course of action that's producing no results or poor results. I've seen so many people ruin their careers. I've seen so many people ruin their careers because they were inflexible and unable to adapt. This is so like apt right now. It, it's so on the button right now because this is what we're talking about and your need as photographers to adapt into what's happening right now in the current state of photography. The current state of photography is this. Photographers are talking to camera. Photographers are showing behind the scenes. Transparency is the new meta. And this that I'm about to show you, artists have to believe in possibilities that don't exist. This should inspire. And if it doesn't, oh my goodness, I don't even know what else I can do to and inspire I've seen you. So many people ruin their careers because they were inflexible and unable to adapt. Yeah. So first off, did you, is that, is that one of your sort of mottos? Did you read that somewhere? No, that's me. That's I, you. That's an okay. honest, I mean, that's you a say that and I picture those people in my head. I'm not going to tell you who they are. <laughs> right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> but but so that's like the 30 years culmination of, of from sleeping on the egg crate to working on yeah. you know high-end music videos and yeah. film and and now, seeing you know. I want you to think about this shot. He's on a jet black background, very easy to do. He's lit very easy to do with the skill sets that you have but imagine this subjects you in this situation he's speaking on camera but he's not speaking to camera he's speaking to the interviewer and he's being filmed from the side so his eye contact never hits camera his eye contact always maintains the interviewer who's offset right? Using this technique as a way to introduce talking to camera to get yourself comfortable being on camera, but without looking at the camera. Like I have this camera on and imagine I'm doing an interview, but I'm speaking this way to somebody. Now, what that does is it makes you the subject easier to flow and you can also have a family have a friend have somebody offset cueing you with questions this is the other reason why i wanted to share this particular piece of video i don't want to i don't want to lose the context of what he's saying but i want you to know that 
setting up this type of a shot for you to speak to camera might help. On the egg crate to working on yeah. you know high-end music videos and yeah. film and and yeah. seeing, you know. You know, the ability to grow and adapt and revise your model inside your head, the more you're malleable, the more you're viable for success. The more that you're rigid, the more that you're right, the more that you have a liability for failure. <laughs> because the Are you world, seeing this? none of us know how the world works. We have clues, we have ideas, we have experiences based on our past and things that people tell us. But as humans, our perceptions are not, we don't perceive reality, you know? Our sensory organs give us, you know, photons and audio vibrations that go into the circuitry of our brains and our biology manipulates it and 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 just the the subtleties in the human psyche and cross wires or whatever it is none of us looks at anything a hundred percent objectively though we may think we do we color it we filter it we make assumptions based on prior experience and the best you can do is to, to try and learn when and where that's happening and, and try and counteract it, you know? But it's not 100% possible, you know? I mean, I just, I know that, that's why you've probably heard me say a few times that it's like, well, that's my perception and my experience. Mm. I'm not gonna tell you that's the way it is because I don't believe that's the way it is. It's how I experienced it in that moment and that's all I can articulate to you. You know, you should also ask this person and that person and trust your own senses. And, and I think that in doing that, you get a better picture because it's like, oh, they saw it a little differently and I saw it a little differently. And so you kind of synthesize, um, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, it's a fuzzy thing. It's like, what, what is it possibly? Um, you know, but, but the people I see fail are the ones who, who, well, not all of them, but some of the people I see fail are the ones who have this rigid idea that it works like this. You do this, you do this, you do this, and that happens. And when one of those things fails to produce, it's like, you know, Hollywood hates me. People are evil. You know, the system is, is rigged against me. This is super um, You know, critical. I'm unlucky. I'm a victim, whatever, you know. And that's just not empowering. And even, even if somebody really did do a thing against you, even if somebody intentionally boned you, um, trip to you, you know, even if you met somebody and it really was rigged, if you surrender to victimhood, you've given up your power, you know, even if it's true, don't accept the role, accept, you know, accept that you have the power and, Ooh, and maybe yeah. you just don't go that way. Maybe. Don't give up the power. Is this striking a chord with you guys? We can't give up our power as far as uh, creatives and we can't play the victim you know we can't play the victim oh my god i didn't get that job i showed my portfolio they don't like me they don't like black people they don't like women they didn't like my style you know it's just you can't it went to a photographer that was more suited to the job i wasn't prepared i wasn't ready i was you know like the more victim blaming that we do we have to kind of just own it and take responsibility you know honestly and, and rarely is it that someone's out there you trying to get way, you maybe you go that way again that's the malleability it's like it's like okay i thought that was going to work it didn't work i bashed my head i tripped exactly. somebody either did or did not deliberately thwart me that's all beside the point what am i going to do now but I've, I've just seen people who have that rigidity of thinking, you know, or that assumption that somebody else is persecuting them. Again, whether it's true or not, really doesn't matter. Are you going to be empowered in that moment to divert or are you gonna be stopped? That's a choice you have to make. And, and, and I'm not gonna judge anybody based on their choice. It makes me sad if, if that keeps them from what they want 
but it's their choice to make, and I respect that. So if someone is or isn't being kept from gatekeepers, whomever, this is so valid in their mind. This is so how do they say, okay, maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but I'm not going to accept that that's going to keep me down. I'm not going to, i.e., accept the victimhood. Mm -hmm. What are they doing to get? I realize each situation will be specific, but sort of what kind of mindset aside from that, what, what kind of action are they taking to make sure they don't stay in that victimhood? Well, one of the things that you can do, first of all, is not consider yourself an island. And by that, I go back to my example where I said, you're standing there and, and I tell you something, but what did that person see? And what did you see? So don't keep it all here. Ask this person, ask this person, you know? You've got a team, we're all a team, we all have each other's backs. If you don't have friends like that, you've got the wrong friends. This is a business. Well played. We all have a support system. And again, this is why my Discord and this photography community is so important. We are that support system. So you guys aren't an island. So you're not out there on your own. You've got a team. We're all a team. We all have each other's backs. If you don't have friends like that, you've got the wrong friends. This is a business. This is an industry. As an artist, you need your posse. You need the people who believe in you. You need the people who hold you accountable to do the things you say you will do and follow through and will gently call you when you don't. (laughs) <laughs> um, and hey, you guess who you're talking that when to? You are in that moment and you are stuck and you feel that something has stopped you or someone has stopped you or you made a mistake. You can say, I, I just, I don't know what to do. Do you, can, what do you think? Give me some advice, you know? And, and you can do it with peers, but this is also where mentors are really important. Reach out to the people who are successful doing what you need to do because you know why? They've done it. They know how to make it happen. Again, they can't give this you the profound, roadmap because yeah. you will not take the same path. You will not meet the same people. But bits and pieces of what they say will apply. And they have had peers who've had different experiences. They're going to be able to give you advice and answers. And again, this is why I say people should have more than one mentor because Every, you know, everyone's going to give you different advice. And it doesn't mean that one person's advice is better than another's. It's all based on their life experience. But if you have a variety, this is so, you have so a variety beautiful. of possibilities. You have chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, you know. They're all good, you know. But which one is right in that moment for you? Um, so, so, so that's what I would tell them to do is, is, is just, is just is, is reach outside yourself, you know, seek advice, Consult your this mentors. Is, consult your friends. I love this guy. Um, He's you know, so so, so on them on the put money. a put a post on a filmmaking board with He's complete so strangers. Here's my challenge. What do you suggest? You know, throw it out to the universe and see what the universe throws back. Maybe and maybe you have a better oh, idea so than good, anything right? I Let's said. Go. Please share you hear, that Ethan. with me when you think of it. But um, you know, to me, there's always possibilities. There's always there's always in life, there's always that thing we've overlooked, you know, no matter what we consider, you know, if, if, if life gives us A, B, and C, there's to film always courage, secret answer number to. D. You we may not know what it is, channel. you know, but we can look for it. We can go to our peers and our mentors to try and figure it out. And there may also be, you know, secret, num- secret answer E, F, and G. We, I don't know. But I refuse, if, if I look at the, at the evidence and it does not permit me to continue toward my goal, then, then, then I declare that that's incomplete evidence. And, and, and just because I don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So rigidity kills careers? I don't think it kills, I'm not gonna say, I wouldn't be so absolutist to say that rigidity kills creators, but I would say, that that rigidity hobbles options, you know. <laughs> well rigidity played. hobbles limits options. I like that. Your your choices and rigidity and, and if you limits are your willing choices. to give up rigidity, if you are willing to give up being right. In my case, if you are willing to give up being shyness, 
or, or being shy. If you declare that this goal of mine, this dream of mine, is more important than all those other things, it opens doors. It gives you possibilities that do not exist if you say, my shyness is more important, or my being right, I have to be right. That's your prerogative. You can be right, but you may not get that thing you want. Hmm. Really, really, really profound. I just, I mean, you guys see why I had to share that with you today. I hope you guys found that beneficial. We have our favorite marketing creative, Ethan Klein, in chat. Welcome, Ethan. I'm glad you're here. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you have found that helpful. Like, I, there's no, I, I think that there's so much advice there. And know that I've taken so much of that advice. And I've been kind of living that advice, really, for my whole career adapting and being flexible has been the reason that I'm still here. The reason that I've been shooting professionally for over 30 years is flexibility. I'm malleable and willing to shift if things aren't working. The first shift that I made was um, way, way, way back in the early, early beginnings of my career where I wanted to be a fashion photographer. Fashion photography is all that I cared about early. It was all about shooting fashion. And I showed my fashion photography to the Globe and Mail. And the Globe and Mail uh, art director looked at my fashion work and he said, great, here, shoot a portrait. And I went out and shot that portrait and came back and delivered it. And he said, amazing, here, shoot this portrait. And I went and shot that second portrait. And I said to Michael, the art director, when I returned, I said, Michael, you know I'm a fashion photographer, right? And Michael Gregg said this. He said, Cardi, any hack with a camera can take pictures of beautiful girls in beautiful scenarios with beautiful hair, makeup, clothing. It takes a real photographer to photograph the rest of us. What kind of a photographer are you? Like that one mindset shift where I was a fashion photographer only ended up being the beginning really of my life as a photographer because Michael Gregg, this art director, challenged me and I was a quote unquote fashion photographer. If it wasn't for Michael Gregg, I wouldn't have this type of a portfolio where I've shot Pharrell and Daft Punk and Kanon and Sierra and Deepa Mehta and General Romeo Dallaire and Pete Rock and Kanye and Ludacris and Sandra, like all of these editorial portraits that I do come from me first adapting from being a fashion photographer to being a people photographer. That one mentality shift saved my career. It, in fact, actually gave me a career. So that was my first headspace shift. 10 years later, in the mid 2000s ish, around there, now it's time for me to, and I mean, I started teaching and lecturing at photography schools in my third year of business. So I had been teaching my whole first basically 10 years. Now I, in the 2005, 2006, I started doing workshops. That was my next pivot, was teaching photographers one-on-one, -on -one, making small workshops and teaching photographers lighting, transitioning to pro, introduction to digital photography. Like I had six or seven classes that I would do and I did that wholeheartedly for a really long time and it was amazing. 
that was my next pivot. Um, in 2009, I got a camera that started to shoot video or that could shoot video. That was the 7D, I do believe that was the camera, the 7D. Crop sensor shoots 720 video. That was the camera. And from there, that was my next pivot where I started now adding video as a thing that I could do. Very soon after I started shooting video, I started shooting 60 second portraits, which are basically living photographs. This is something that I basically invented. I had never seen anybody do this before, which was create photographs that actually moved. And I thought, what an amazing way to use video where I'm actually, the camera's fixed, my focus is locked, I'm aiming at a subject, and I just allow that subject to move within a 60 second space. And this, this type of work now really started like a whole vision of video and fashion and photography and actually ended up very quickly, very quickly getting me campaigns where I'm shooting beauty for cosmetic companies and my exact, exact sensibility for my 60 second portraits. I'm now filming for skincare brands. Like the ability to adapt is what all of us need to do as photographers in order to cross over and really, really make something of ourselves as photographers. Like people want to hear from us. And if you really think about early on, oh my God, like if I look back at early video content, if I look back at my first times on camera, it's painful. And, and most people's first time on camera is going to be painful, but we still have to push through. We still have to try. And I really hope that you feel me when I say how important it is for us to adapt, how important it is for us to be pliable. And I'm coming to you from example. I'm coming to you from experience and knowing at any point if I was rigid in my career, I wouldn't have a career at any point if I refused to add video, if I refused to go from shooting Hasselblad film to shooting digital, which was, by the way, don't you remember? Digital was the end of photography. Do you remember that? We have to adapt as photographers. Transparency is the new meta. That is the whole overarching theme of today's episode. Know that we have to let people in and we can't be rigid. We have to let people inside our closet, open the doors, invite people in, tell them stories. That's what's going to really, really be the thing that takes you to the next level, that takes your marketing to the next level, that takes your photography to the next level. I hope you guys found that inspiring. That really is the mindset shift that you guys all need. I hope that you guys are going to take it to heart and use the things that I talked about today as um, motivation for you to also be in front of the camera. I hope me telling you my story as far as how I've had to shift and pivot all the way through my 30 year career. And I didn't even get to the point where COVID and I had to pivot and I started streaming live. That was the most recent pivot. 
I started streaming live. I started streaming on Twitch. I started this show. I added a second show. That was another huge pivot is broadcasting. And, and then from there, really doubling down on YouTube. That was another pivot. So we have to adapt. Adapting and being flexible and being pliable this is the life of a freelancer because that's what we have to do for our clients continually is adapt and produce. So get used to it. All right. So this week's mini challenge is filming yourself talking to camera. The overall monthly challenge for the month is exploration of self. By the way, in case you don't know, if you guys aren't in the Discord, if you aren't um, in the Discord, you can't submit photos. You definitely need to submit photos. So please jump in the Discord. You'll find the link in the description of this video below. By the way, guys, I'm encouraging chat messages. Please keep the chat going. If you guys have questions, please ask me. If you have questions amongst yourselves, ask each other questions. Let's go. I'm glad you're here, Emma. Also, 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 please comment on what you see and hear. If you see something fun, exciting, amazing that you like from here, clip it. You guys have the ability to make clips of this channel. If you go underneath this video window, you'll see scissors. Clip that scissors and it'll show you the clip window will pop up. Make clips. Clips are how I market and promote this channel. So if you see anything cool, clip it. All right. Now, lastly, it's time for the photo drop. It's time to look to see if there's any challenge photos. It's time to see what you guys have in store for me. So Julie has some photographs for, for us, which makes me very happy. Julie says a couple of snaps of me wearing a traditional winter garment from the Poltava region. They're a bit softer than I'd like them to be. Apologize for that. I didn't bring my tripod with me and I had to use a really stupid way of stabilizing the camera and it didn't work well. But I still wanted to share me as a proper peasant woman. Shot with the Canon 6D 50mm 1.8. Right now, Julie is in the Ukraine. She's traveled back to her home country during war to deal with um, some stuff with her family. Um, this is a self-portrait of Julie in the Ukraine. Julie, this is great. You did a great job here. It's framed really well. Let's go. Let's go. Now, with Julie and her ability to shoot self-portraits, this is her these are the obstacles that she's dealing with. She has a 6D, okay? It's from 10 years ago. It has no tracking and no pop-out screen. Um, so she can't, she can't see herself in the camera. So the framing that she has here with her being relatively close here and a little bit close here, her head being in front of this fence versus, you know what I mean? Just a little bit distracting. It's hard for her to frame up but Julie, as far as this, as your first effort, this is great. And I've also seen some other pictures of you already. I've kind of saw ahead. The traditional outfit is really great. I think it's fantastic. But let's look at some of the other photos you made here because I know they get better. This is a great Great, great headshot of you there, Julie. Let's go. As for selfies, Julie, this is really, really good. You should be very proud of this picture. You guys see what I see, I hope. I'm very, very much liking this photo a lot. There it is. I'm liking this photo a lot, Julie, and looking at it as a cover, you can see the framing really works nicely. 
Oops, let me just get this masthead beautifully. The framing works really well. Like, I, I think it's fantastic, Julie. You should be very, very happy. Um, thank you, Emma. Thank you, thank you, thank you, girl. Looking forward to looking at your latest studio shoot when you're ready to share it with me. Julie, this is a fantastic, fantastic photo. You should be very, very, very... Um, this is how a married Ukrainian woman looks in the 18th, 19th century. The focus is really good, Julie. Your eyes are tracking really well. The depth of field and the non-distracting background is really strong. It as a cover and the little bit of headspace is really strong. And also, you crop this in such a way that you can post it to Instagram. Like, look, she's given the proper headspace here so she can make um, an 8x10 without cutting her necklace. So, again, Julie, you're cropping here. Everything is on the button. This is one of the best photographs of you that you've taken. I'm so glad that you pulled your camera out there and really started to push. All right, let's look at the last one. The last one for me isn't quite as strong, the like looking kind of over your shoulder. Um, I really feel like this is, it's cool, but I love the fact that you just squared up. This is the one that like really, really wins. I know you're just trying to give us variations and I know that this isn't the last time that you're gonna be out there shooting portraits of yourself. Um, this one is by far my favorite. This one is a close second. And then this one is a bit of a the third. What you have to just be conscious of is just coming with like the shoulder first. Um, I feel like it would be a little softer if you cropped a little bit closer with this picture. Like again, it could punch in a little bit. Um, it even looks nice close like this. But again, this is all just personal opinions this one here is by far your best thank you so much for submitting julie let's go amazing 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 thank you thank you thank you let's look at what else you guys have in store for me let's see what else you guys got in store for me I think there should be stuff in the photo bomb. I know that Turtle has made some new drone photographs. I know that my brother Les has photographed um, some of his paintings. I think we will start with some new drone photographs from our buddy Turtle. First photograph up from Turtle. This picture to me appears upside down. It seems to me like it should be like reversed completely, which we're gonna do right now. If we drop this into Photoshop and then we go image rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's the beginning of it looking like something. And then another 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's where it was. So let's put it back. Let's go another 90 degrees clockwise. It feels a little like it makes a bit more sense this way to me, but the overall gray I guess tone that we have happening um the gray tone that we have happening in here and up here it looks like the exposure could be up just a little bit and then also this is one of those photographs that is like a colorless color photograph so if you do one of these tricks especially with these color this color photographs and take the saturation out Look at this photograph now. It is a color photograph. And if I do this, it is now a black and white photograph. And if you see the difference between this and this, the only thing is, is color balance. This has no color, but it looks like it's actually 
neutral color because this is very much a colorless photograph. So this is what I would do to this photograph is I would flip it and I would make it black and white. That's uh, my man turtles. That is mine. Just what I am saying. Let me know if you guys agree. Let's look at turtles next few photographs. This is right on the money. We would need to change absolutely nothing here. This is a fantastic photograph. Great detail. Great detail. Really nice snow. Nice fog. I love the monochromatic. Let's look at it as a cover. Really strong. Really strong as a cover turtle. I like this a lot. This is dope. I rate it. I rate it. We're going to give it the smoke. Very, very good turtle. I like this a lot. This is very cool. You should be very proud of that. All right, let's look at something else from Turtle. Turtle has submitted quite a few photos, which is fantastic. I really do need you guys to shoot as often as you can. And speaking of how often you guys are shooting, if you guys have a look at my community board on my, my community tab on my page, the thing that's kind of sad is I asked you guys a poll question and that poll question was this, how often do you shoot? And these are the answers, which really, uh, it's sad, you know, how often do you shoot? When I can was 75% of the votes, 25% of the people said weekly. And nobody said a few times a week, nobody said every single day. So this tells me from the people who chose to answer this poll that you guys all need to take the time and schedule the time to get in front of your camera more. I think it's incredibly necessary. Incredibly necessary. All right. This is a great shot very strong very very strong um let me just hide my camera this is very strong really nice flow here nice leading line i like this you photograph this quite a bit i really really like this photo i don't have much to add except for what would it look like as a vertical it's my only question but I really do see that you shot this as a horizontal. The top down is really great. I'm rating this. I like it. I like it. I'm not going to overthink it. That's a great photo. Let's look at more from Turtle. Oh, good. So you gave me an alternate shot here. I like this very much. I like this very much. I like this flow. This is a photograph very similar to something that you've made before. I like how it goes right into this corner here and right into this corner here it gives you a really nice flow through this road i like the tree tone here and here looking at it as a cover it's this is beautiful this is a great 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 technical photo well done you should be very happy with this yes! jesus that scared me who did that All right, turtle. Great, great, great job. This is nice and textured. This is a great image. I really like this. Really strong textured image. This is one of the better ones from this session. Look at the shadows. Really almost painterly. Really strong. I like this very, very, very much. What's happening down here? all of this, this nuance here, the path, the trees up here, the, like there's so many nuanced things here. Turtle, this is a great, great, great photograph for a cover. I love this, love, love, love. You should be thinking about printing this photograph, Turtle, for sure. Really great, very great job, great job. Great job, let's see if Turtle has more. Let's see if Turtle has more. And he does. And he does. This is a covered bridge shot top down, which I really like. Really good composition. Again, it's a bit claustrophobic, meaning I feel like it's a little tight here. 
and a little tight here. If you were gonna make this shot an eight by 10, if I just take this like this and drop it into Photoshop and then take the crop tool and make this uh, an eight by 10 proportion, you can see it's just a little claustrophobic. You can see it's just a little tight. So because of that, it's one of those things where I would love just a little bit more space. That's how it's gonna crop if it goes to Instagram. So, you know, just a little bit more height on the drone would be brilliant. Um, love it, love it, love it. Compositionally really strong. This is another photograph that black and white would be amazing. I do like that blue roof, but if you see, oops, if you see this as a black and white photo, let me just pull out uh, Satch. You see, uh, it's given a little bit of moray effect. You see this in the roof. We got we talked about moray effect a couple of weeks ago, but you see the moray effect that's happening here on the roof. That's because of these vertical lines. And if I zoom in on the photo, you can see how much moray effect this is actually doing on the screen. And if you really zoom in on this roof, you can see the reason why you see the lines you see the dark and the white and the dark and the gray and the dark and the gray and the dark and the gray so look at how much more effect on stream look at how much more that this image does so that's uh, a fun fact again about when more happens and why and an example of something that a appears monochromatic but when you zoom in and look you can see it's actually dark line gray line dark line gray line dark line gray line so um more but again i love this photo notice the more effect happens both in color and in black and white it doesn't discriminate um it doesn't discriminate at all something to watch for when you're selecting your finals and also something to watch for when you're choosing the kind of stuff to shoot so you can see it's happening quite a bit this is a digital camera issue a digital display really showing things digitally um malcolm says when bob when your boba tea neighbor pops in and hands over a free drink because they took photos for their social media prep for a new drink next week and that becomes the opportunity to blatantly self-promote as a part of a thank you queue with five minutes of work five minutes of editing on a mac and longer to email it at full resolution because of the iphone tethering so he got a free drink malcolm from a new bubble tea spot on his block and he decided to photograph it and send it back malcolm look at what this looks like without the table this is i think the only place that you missed is showing the table i feel like if you lower your angle the colors are insane julie i definitely agree um if you lower the the tripod and make the table appear thin look at how much stronger this photograph is when you can't see the wood right like you see here not seeing the wood how absolutely punchy the suba the tap the the straw the drink is against the background so as soon as you see the wood now is it kind of like breaks the illusion so my vibe would be um, cutting that table and shooting something that looks like akin to there. Like to me, that's the picture, cutting out that table. The bottom of the drink, we don't really need. There's nothing that you're missing there, but that really zeroes in. Now on the brand, the straw brings you back in to the brand and this little bit of foam like breaks it up. Like to me, that's the picture. Um, to me, this is now an ad where as soon as you show the table, it just breaks the fifth wall that you're like, oh yeah, some guy just took this, put it on a table and snapped a photo of it. You know what I mean? You got to 
keep the illusion alive. That's the photo right there. Yes or yes. Um, well done, though. Very well shot, Malcolm. Very well shot. The client will be very happy with this. Um, next, my brother. We went over some of my brother's art last episode with this George Floyd painting. My brother is a painter, which is the reason that I'm a photographer. Um, my biggest influence, my older brother, Les. This is some of his paintings. This is incredible, Les. Very, very sick. My brother is an airbrush artist. In case you're wondering what the, me the medium is, it is airbrush, essentially spray on canvas with stencil. The exposure on this is a little low, Les. I'm not sure if you're watching, but the exposure here is a bit low compared to what the actual piece is. This looks like it's about minus one, meaning um, one stop under, um, which means it's it could be twice as bright, twice as bright without losing the detail in here because I've seen this painting in real life. I know how bright it is. Um, this is closer. It's the same painting, but just the detail. This is closer, but the exposure of this is still overall low. This is insane. This is one of the gas tanks my brother has done, a Harley gas tank, it looks like, with these skulls. Very, very dope. Very dope. Just to give you a little bit of the detail of the kind of work that my brother does. He's very good with paint, as you can see clearly. He's a savant with paint. And that looks like it might just be the end of the new stuff in the Discord. Let me see if there is anything else to look at. Ray has shared something with us, which we're going to look at before we end off today's episode. Ray Cleveland, by the way, guys, if you're not following Ray on Twitch, Ray streams his photography on Twitch he also has a YouTube channel, which I will show you how you can find his YouTube channel right now. Ray has posted something for us to look at. Oh, lovely. So I'm going to show you right here. This is the link to the video that I'm um, sharing with you right now. Oh, shit. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> um, this is the uh link that i'm about to share with you right now this is a short one minute clip from ray enjoy here's a glimpse behind the scenes of a recent time-lapse photo shoot on mount lemon just north of tucson arizona photo that you shared the still um would it be okay if we watch that again ray here's a glimpse I really want to take this in again of a recent time lapse photo shoot on mount lemon first of all ray just had cancer surgery ray is out there and just north there's no excuses Tucson, for you people Arizona. no excuses Ray had to take the time, not just to set up the camera for the tap time lapse, but also photograph the camera shooting the time lapse. Like he created B roll around this video. This is great B roll. Even if it's handheld, the little bit of handheld motion actually, I really love these shots with the the wheat in front of the lens. I imagine you're doing all of this with just your iPhone working unless you have two pro cameras. 
and this time lapse is so lovely. So lovely. How I would love to see this time lapse, Ray, is I would love it to ramp back. Sorry, I'm not going to play it a third time, but I would love it to ramp backwards. Like basically, the time lapse starts here and then it ramps. It ramps, it goes, it pulls, it pulls, and right about right where you end the video here, what I would do is I would basically do a fast pull backwards in reverse, like a full, um, a full, like, like just reverse the footage in fast time and have all the clouds and everything go back into the sun. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know if you play around with ramping and change the time, but that just felt like so much stuff is coming towards us, coming towards us, coming towards us, coming towards us. And then it just ends. I would love it to turn around and spit it all back. Like just watch this little bit. Imagine it's like with this grass moving and all this and the sun pushing through, it would just give us an opportunity to have that sun pushing through one more time. Like just push it all back and give us that sun and that's how it ends. It's just the thought, it's just the thought, but I really do love, really do love the fact that you spend time to do these time lapses. You execute them so well. Um, if it wasn't for your surgery, you would have been on the show as a guest already talking about how you do your motion lapse and your time lapse. I like how you do like a push in while you're, while it's moving. It's just all of this stuff just makes it your video content really special. I want you guys to use Ray today as inspiration. Ray, I'm also using you today as inspiration. Hope you guys are feeling it. Um, there's no excuses. As you guys are going through the motions of creating your video content, as a, a, of talking to camera, know that um, you can do this. Know that there's no need. <sighs> there's no need to be nervous. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to have those butterfly feelings it's okay talking to camera it's just another skill the same way that you're learning how to operate your camera the same way that you're learning how to focus the same way that you're learning exposure talking to camera is one of those skills because it's going to be important for you to be able to convey your ideas to another creative person you're going to have to jam visual ideas and be able to speak your ideas in confidence so you're not just folding and executing ideas for other people. That's really important. I want you guys to claim back your authority, claim back your, your value as people and as photographers and use video as a weapon. Video is the number one weapon in 2023 that we can use, and it's virtually free. Teaching ourselves how to shoot video, teaching ourselves how to be in front of video, teaching ourselves how to edit video are all things that I want you guys to embrace this year. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm older, I'm more rigid. It's harder for older folks to adapt but I've managed to adapt. I've managed to do all of these things. So use me as an example. Use Mr. Ray Cleveland as an example. If you guys have no more questions for me, we're gonna wrap today up. But again, I make myself available three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, always at 2 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday is Ask a Photo Pro. Sunday is behind the picture. I try to put together information, valuable information, valuable stuff for you guys to soak in every episode. This year, we have a new format. Every month, there is a new theme. This month is self-exploration month. Next month, we are getting into perspectives and angles. 
We are getting into lighting. We are getting into marketing. We are getting into so many things this year. And I'm also going to be cross-pollinating episodes. So although the overall theme is this, you're still going to get a little bit of other sprinkles all the way through. So I have something for everybody in every episode. If you guys like my smiling face and appreciate this content, please consider giving it a like. We're trying to get 10 likes on this video. Also, if you're not subscribed and you want to be notified when my content uploads, please hit the subscribe button. We have some sirens outside and hit the bell notification to be notified every time I upload. As I said earlier, join the discord join the discord join the discord the discord is the fastest growing photography discord on the interwebs you want to be a part of it before there's ten thousand members and it's impossible for me to look at your photos so jump on there now we are trying to hit ten thousand subscribers this year on this channel it is January. We are at 1,000 subscribers. We're trying to multiply that by 1,000 subscribers a month for the rest of the year. Is that possible? Who knows? But I believe it. I believe it's possible. I know if you share this content with your network, more people will learn about me and I can help more people get better at photography. Guys, I thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys appreciate the content and my smiling face. I will see you guys on Thursday. Much love. That video, um, the live stream is already upcoming. So if you're wanting to know what that one is about, um, check that thumbnail. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you tonight for some Warzone.